Uh, thanks for joining us again at Nomad PDU. Today we're going to have a close look at the V5.5. I know the release of this was several months ago, but now that it's spring and people are pulling out or start to look at them again, what can you actually do with them? You know, what are the limitations and so on and so forth? And what does the package come with? So the V5.5 is a 100 amp hour unit. It's a prismatic uh, unit or battery system, A grade. Um, comes with Bluetooth standard and LED screen there, which will give you all of your uh, state of charge. Um, so you think like your draw, your charge rates, etc. Uh, the dimension of this, 325 by 110 by 320, it's around about 14 odd so kilos. It does come with a 10 amp AC DC charger, so you can plug it into the wall and charge it from there. One thing I will say is with any battery, if you're going to put them on charge from the wall, just don't leave your chargers consistently pl uh, plugged in 24 seven and so on. Um, typically it could handle it, but it's not something you should do out of practice with any battery and any charger. Okay, so when it's full, it's full and uh, just disconnect it. Um, the other thing is with these guys here, they have a 100 amp constant output across the unit at any given time. So what you'll find here is that it has dual or two 50 amp Anderson outputs. So if you're gonna run a couple of fridges, you can have an independent Anderson on each of them. You can plug them in their own, uh, their own socket, or you can run a Y lead and have say two fridges running out of one of them. Even a 100 liter fridge is only gonna draw say 10 or 11 amp. So the 50 amp plugs, you can quite happily run two big fridges off one Anderson. Then you've got another Anderson that is free there. Um, for, for any other accessories you've got connected up. And typically what I would suggest, if you're gonna use like a, those kind of oven buddy things that you've got that are 12 volt and they've got a SIGA plug, cut the SIGA plug off, put an Anderson on because a better connection and the obviously Anderson's rated higher than a SIGA plug. So that's the dual 50 amp um, Anderson output. You can run 100 amp out of the unit at any given time. So really an overkill, I mean, for any recreational use, um, you know, you've got 50 amp out of each of the Andersons and you would run, which is what I do, I've got a 600 watt inverter and I could run two of those if I wanted to um, at the same time, one out of each of those. A 600 watt inverter will run most, will do most things, including charge things like your uh, fast charge Milwaukee battery chargers and all those things that run off 240 and draw a little bit more power. Um, so what you're looking for is you're going to stick around the 600 watt mark, look for accessories they're going to be using about 450, 500 because you don't want to max out the, um, uh, an inverter anyway. So the unit comes with the AC-DC charger and then you've got optional DC-DC options. Um, so the other thing I will talk about is it does have a solar input. It does have a built-in MPPT controller. So you can plug a solar panel directly to the unit without a controller and use the controller in the Nomad. This unit here is a 20 amp MPPT, so you can quite happily use a 300 watt solar panel or less, and you'll be safe. So you can connect that direct to the Red Anderson. The Red Anderson is a standard for non-regulated, um, and they're available somewhere like a J-Car or, or, or Autronics or something like that. You can get them, and they're available. So it's 20 amp uh, max charge there, and that will charge it at 14.6 volt, which is the profile for these. So what you find is that the Live PA4, Lylon on your uh, on a DC, We'll charge it, say 14.6. You'll disconnect it, it will drop back down to about 13.5, 13.3 volt, which is what it normally does. So they call this a 12.8 volt system. So 50 amp maximum regulated charge. Uh, getting a couple of questions again lately, uh, people that are installing and uh, a suggestion they can connect directly to their crank battery or sorry, to the alternator. Uh, with a solenoid, um, but basically what that is going to do is let through as much current as that alternator can put out, so it's going to be pitching and troughing ups and downs. That's not a consistent and stable charge rate. So what you're looking for is a maximum 50 amp charge. You always must have a DC-DC if you're going to charge from your vehicle. The DC-DCs nowadays pretty much plug and play. The DC-DCs nowadays also typically have a solar input. So this one here is what I'm using at the moment, which is a Matson. Uh, this one's a 20 amp unit. Um, I actually use a uh, 20 in one of the vehicles and a 40 in the other one. The 40 at one is a really good unit um, in respect to its charge rate. If you're only driving for an hour a day with the 40 amp, it'll just, it'll bang in, in half an hour, it's going to bang in 20 odd amp. Uh, so if you're running one fridge consistent in your vehicle and you just drive to the shops and back each day, it's going to stay full if you've got a 40 amp DC DC. Depends on what you're driving and how and what your driving pads are. That also has a solar input. So if you've got a above 200 watt solar panel connected to one of these, as soon as the car stops and you've got a, if you've got a solar panel on the roof, um, it'll just take over and start charging the solar. So basically tradies use uh, a lot of these for when they're out obviously on site because they can charge all their power tools and uh, also keep their fridge and drinks cold uh, while they're on site. 
It's also light enough at 14 kilos, you can pick it up and take it out. Um, the other thing it does have, does come with uh, brackets. So there's three screws into the unit there, and you can screw into it, say, the, the, the cab of your vehicle. So once you put the, the tabs in place, you can unscrew those three, take the unit out and leave the tabs there, and then remove and replace as you, as you see fit. So it makes it very easy to put in and out. It's nice and clean and tidy, and it doesn't require an additional um, uh, cradle. Uh, and, but you can obviously uh, talk to the partner channel, and they'll have a custom size, custom um, uh, cradles if you, if you so choose. So 50 amp max charge rate and then you give them time. And the other thing is that it does have Bluetooth and will talk to any smartphone, so or Android or Apple. And that is a really great tool. Um, and I originally, when we started putting Bluetooth, I didn't think really it would be, it'd be so um, you know, popular. But the fact is, if you put this where you can't see it, all you do is you pick your phone up, tip on the app, It'll give you all the stats and details of where that battery's at at any given time. So you can sit on your dashboard when you're driving, and unlike the old days when you have to get a monitor to sit on the dashboard that's wired through the your dash and under the floor and to the battery system and all the rest of it, this is basically wireless. Um, and it connects to it live and it just gives you the constant feed and update. And the fact is that you should also keep a, a, the Bluetooth connected because that means when the Bluetooth's connected, it's updating the firmware in the actual battery system. It does have the fast USB ports here, um, so your fast USB and C type, and you've got two SIGA plugs at a 10 amp rated each, and that's just for your nominal stuff that you know does already have plugs on it that you get from an accessory store. So that itself, the unit, the thickness is not much bigger than the previous one. Um, maximum wattage output is 1280 watt um, in, in the system, so a 100 amp constant output at any given time. 50 amp charge maximum rate at any given time. Yes, you can charge at the same time as you're running things. That's exactly what it's designed to do. So this will cover most of the, the your hardcore four-wheel drivers if you've got space to fit it and away you go. We do have another one coming out uh, in the next probably three to five months, I believe, and that'll be a 110 amp hour, which is a cassette style, and that'll be about 61 mil thick, um, and it's a bit longer, uh, probably about uh, around the 400 400 millimeter length wise, but uh, as we come close, those specs will become available at nomadpdu.com.au. So the V5.5 is available now um, in stores uh, across uh, across nationally. Um, if you're not sure where to go, whatever, just contact at nomadpdu.com.au. Uh, the units themselves come with a two-year warranty, charges a 12-month warranty. Um, inverters, what you would probably look at with this is a 600 watt inverter if you wanted to use it with these. Um, when we look at the, uh, the HD stuff that we have, then you'd be looking at larger inverters. But uh, again, when you're recreationally um, you know, off-gridding, you should be looking at efficient appliances. So things like if you're going to have a shower, the shower pump's 12 volt, they're usually low voltage. So all those types of things you're going to commonly use, even a dishwasher you can get that are 12 volt. Those types of things there, look at the amount of what that it's going to draw and then try to keep it in the range. So again, you've got two by 50 amp here. So you could say that's say 600 watt each, approximate to a bit more than that, um, but that gives you that there. Um, what you find up here is you can hold the button down over here for five or six seconds. And it'll go on standby, which is what I've got on at the moment. And then it's gonna have the display constantly on. If I hold the screen button down for another six seconds here, the standby button on the little light there will go off. And then in say another 45 seconds, that uh, screen will go off because again, it doesn't need to be on, and if it's sitting away somewhere else, you're gonna use your Bluetooth to have a look at the system as well. So that's the V5.5 and what it can do. Um, again, read all the instructions when you get them, um, including the instructions and the chargers. The chargers themselves, um, you should always charge them directly to the, the power plug uh, in the house or the wall. Um, try not to be using power boards to connect the charger to. Um, it's a better way to be having a direct connect to uh, the wall and if you're connecting through power boards, that can sometimes get a, 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 like a, an interference and, a, and a, make a buzzing noise. It's not going to hurt it, but you will get questions as to why is it doing that. And that's typically because of the power boards, what tech, what technologies in each of the power boards. So again, V5.5, 14 kilograms, um, will do pretty much everything you need it to do. And the fact that it's, a, it's an A-grade prismatics, it's very robust, handle corrugations very, very well, um, comes with the installation tabs, it comes with the AC-DC 10 amp charger, um, retails $1,100 uh, and for an entry, entry level I guess um, lithium system for a uh, power distribution unit, 
it's pretty much got everything uh, jammed into it, and then you move up into the, the, the higher range casket stuff, and it's going to be more expensive, but this will give you all you need at 100. And one thing I will point out is that it's always about the charge rate. If you've got 100 amp, and then people are saying to me, oh, I want a 200 amp, and I'm only running a couple of fridges and things like that, it's not about the size of the battery, because that's really just a, a storage point between whatever it's taking in and putting out, is that if your charge rate is up, and you keep that, if you keep that full, then it's not necessary to have a 200 or 300 or 400 amp unit because that's got a 100 amp constant output. If you're putting in, if you've got a 50 amp going into that, for an example, if you had a regulated solar panels, it might be six, 700 watt solar panel regulated at 50 amp. If you're banging that in during say five or six sunshine hours a day, that's 250 amp going in the sunshine hours a day. That'll be full every night. What's it draw overnight? You don't need 200 amp a battery. It's heavier, it's not portable anymore takes away, I guess, the benefits of portability. So you've got to look at, it's always about the charge rate. How quickly can you charge it? What are you drawing out of it? So if it's full every night, how does it draw overnight? And what are you going to charge by DC-DC? And DC? what are you going to charge by solar? So again, you can have a, a regulator charge in here. You might have, say, a 20 amp or 25 amp red up plugged in there, and that's charging. You could also, if you wanted to, then have a, a solar um, a solar panel plugged in there with because you've got another, what, 50, um, say, another 25 amp that you can go in. So you could put another 300 watt solar panel directly to that and they could be connected at the same time because you've got 50 amp max charge rate at any given time. So the way that the easiest way to do it is get one of these DC DCs with solar input. It's always regulated and then that thing does everything for you. But you've always got these as a handy spare in case the DC goes, fails, whatever it is, something happens. You've lost your charges and you've got no way of charging. It's always good to have uh, that capacity to be able to direct charge from a solar uh, from a solar panel. So hopefully that that's answered a lot of questions about the V5.5. The versatility is still there. Uh, flexibility because it's still light um, makes it uh, just a really handy thing to have to move between your car, your boat, your caravan, your trailers, and things like that. Um, if you're out in the farm and you're going to do some spraying or or you're going to fishing and you're going to have automatic electric reels, these things are running perfectly. So contact at Nomad PDE dot com that you available now in store if you want to get in contact with us um, by all means contact at nomadspdu.com.au